Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another Monday this and that video where I talk about all different topics, sometimes leading you back to old videos, letting you know of videos yet to come out, answering questions that have come in for the past week and whatever else I feel like talking about. So let's get to the topics of today. And I'll start actually with the cabinets. I'm gonna be doing a separate video, doing a more thorough uh, tour basically of the cabinets that Patrick has finished after all these years. And But one thing I did promise last week is I was gonna show you how this turned out out here. So you can see a little corner of it. It's actually not quite finished. There's one more thing Patrick's gonna do, but it's basically it's just a peel and stick kind of wood brick style thing that you put together, tiles and it was just to complete and fill in that area and i really like it it's got a little bit of green in it so it helps tie it into the green of my countertops but um one of the things patrick is going to do is put a little bit of a wood framing a little narrow wood framing on each side to give it a more finished look the other two finishing touches we have to do is Finish painting the ceiling, is paint the ceiling. We've got all the walls painted here, but we need to repaint the ceiling, especially this corner over here where I still have a stain from when one of my wine jugs blew up in the middle of the night. <laughs> well, the jug didn't blow up, but it blew off the airlock and uh, stained my ceiling. So we got to paint all over that, but that's good. that's a project for another day. And then the other one is to put the a border paper around that my son bought us years ago. I'll talk about that in more detail in the video that I'll actually be shooting today, but you'll see in about three weeks. So you can see more of the cabinets and some of the fun details that Patrick has done. Okay, so the glass gem corn, that was one of the main things I wanted to talk about today because I, I keep forgetting about it because it's one of the very last things that I ever harvest. And around here, uh, corn, because we have such a short growing season and it's pretty cold, it can be tricky finding the corn that does best for this area. Now I know some people that do grow uh, sweet corn, but I can't remember what variety it is, but they do pretty good. But again, even within the same town or same county, you can have varying different climates or microclimates that can determine what's going to do best for you. Soil conditions and so on and so forth, all these things play a part. And what I have found is that for me, the glass gem grows the best. They don't get huge for me. I don't know how big they get for other people, but this size right here is about the biggest they usually get. Most commonly, I'll see this size right here, but it's still a great corn. And um, though I didn't give as much, get as big of a harvest, th this is just some of it. This is just the first ones to dry. I have a bunch more drying by the wood stove and there's more out in the garden that I need to bring in because our rains finally did return. But anyway, I know part of that is just because our really cold starting season, but I'm glad I went ahead and planted more, assuming I wasn't going to get any corn off of it. I just went ahead and did it much later than the first. This is all from the first planting, but I've got years of corn coming. I even brought in a couple of those to dry the, the, and uh, but I'm leaving some of those out there as long as I can. But anyway, we I'm gonna I've decided that I'm gonna turn instead of using that main garden, that bigger garden section right right in the middle amongst the beans and the medicinal herbs like marshmallow valerian and all that, I'm gonna turn that all into a cornfield basically. I'll still allow my borage and my red mustard and anything else that wants to just come up in there that's a good medicinal herb that I typically save seeds from anyway, I'll still let that stuff grow, but um, I'm not gonna be planting anything else in there I think next year, unless I change my mind. And yes, beans are great growing around corn, just not here because our beans grow, come in, are, especially the runner beans, they're usually the first to start growing. And as long as it takes the corn to get tall enough, the beans quickly outgrow it. So I don't grow my beans around corn, but it is a really good option for those who can get them to grow at a pretty even pace. But around sunflowers, it does really, uh, the beans do really well. But anyway, this is about the corn. So uh, the glass gem corn, which I do sell some of the seeds. And I again, I don't have an Etsy store anymore, but people have been buying seeds and various things, other products that we sell just by emailing me at raincountryhomestead at gmail.com. And then I send you a product list at least the current one, 
But anyway, I do sell the seeds. I don't know how long I'll keep doing that. I'm thinking about saving up more and more of this corn. And though it, the glass gem, you can eat it as a more of a sweet corn if you pick it young, but it is a popcorn. Uh, I only tried popping it once and decided not to try it again. It didn't pop well for me, but it could have been that particular corn. Or I just did a little bit and I've been afraid to try again because I don't want to waste it. But we use it as a grinding corn for making corn meal and it's great. So Patrick did a video, in fact, uh, several years ago. We had the bean and corn auger that we got with our country living grain mill. And he took all the kernels off the cobs and then ground it into a meal and I did use it for making cornbread even the cornbread I use in my beans and cornbread though typically you're supposed to use white I did try it in that and it worked great so by the way the beans and cornbread what I call Tar Heel beans and cornbread I did finally get that recipe together I just got the video finished and uploaded yesterday so it'll publish in three weeks from about now and I did write out the recipe and we'll provide the link to that as well. So finally got around to that. But anyway, I do recommend the glass gem corn. It is the one I know I can, I can grow because it grows faster than other corns. And a lot of times it'll get three ears per stalk. That's not common amongst most corn. Most corn, you're going to get one to two ears per stalk where this you typically get three. Here's the other thing. It To me, it's dual purpose in the fact that I'll use it through the season as a decor for the fall and all through Thanksgiving. And then later I worry about getting it off the cobs and then saving it for when we're ready to um, grind it up for a meal. And the same thing with pie pumpkins. I can use them as decor because they'll last for a long time. And then after that, I'll take them, cook them up and dehydrate them. And the pumpkin powder is wonderful. I'm so glad I finally started doing that. That's how I preserve my pumpkins or even my spaghetti squash from here on out. And I have a video I did on that last year. I'll link to down below and some of the many uses that you can use the pumpkin powder for. And then right here, you'll see the uh, cucumber. I actually have one more out there like this. It's not quite as big, but this one I was allowing to just stay out there and grow for the sake of seeds. So I, I, I brought it in because it was hanging really high in the greenhouse and the plants are dying back and I'm afraid it's going to fall and burst and then my chickens will eat because the chickens are allowed in the greenhouse now and I don't want them to eat all the seeds. So I want to make sure I get seeds off of that so I'm bringing it in to just let it finish and then I wanted to answer a question about the tomato flakes so I just had this video come out on Thursday this past week and a lot of people because I just didn't think to say this in the video were asking about the ratio of water to tomato well I don't really work off a ratio I just go by sight and it all is going to depend on what you're making if you're wanting to make a tomato paste obviously your water ratio is going to be much less than if you're making a sauce and much less still than what you would use to make a soup so when I use it I never measure it that way I just put it in in fact so far I have yet to make a sauce just out of the tomato flakes because I'm still working through jars of tomato sauce that I've canned over the years and to those what I do to thicken the tomato sauce is I add the tomato flakes and that's how I thicken up my sauce instead of having to add a tomato paste I just use my tomato flakes once I work through all my canned tomatoes then I'll start making my sauce directly from the tomato flakes themselves but from now on this is how I'm going to preserve my tomato flakes so what I suggest you do is is start with maybe a one-to-one -one ratio. Mix that, let it sit, cook it a little bit if you need to, and you can always add more water or more flakes as is needed to get the consistency you want. If you're wanting a sauce, you're gonna need more than a one-to-one -one ratio, I'm pretty sure. But you just gotta play with it. I had someone ask me for a specific amount, like 28 ounces. Well, what I suggest is starting with 28 ounces of water and then start putting your tomato flakes in and just keep adding them and cooking them until you get the thickness you want and then you'll know just if you want if you want to keep track make sure you're writing down exactly how much you're putting in so maybe put your 28 ounces of water add a quarter cup mix it in well let it dissolve add another quarter cup and then just keep track of how many of those you're adding so it's I know it's going to take more than a quarter of a cup I'm just throwing a number out there 
So when I work with stuff like that, I don't go by ratios. I go by what I'm making. And since my sauces are usually cooking for a period of time anyway, to release the lycopenes, to get all that good flavor cooked into the sauce from the other herbs and spices I'm adding, then I might end up adding more flakes or more water as I go because it's gonna cook down anyway, if that's how you do your Italian sauces, barbecue sauces, and so on. Oh, and one more garden thing I keep forgetting to talk about is my grapes. So far, I have harvested eight gallons of grapes. I still have quite a bit more to get out there. The weather just suddenly turned nasty just as my grapes all got ripe. And uh, it doesn't look like it's raining today, so I might get out there and get a few more gallons but it's very windy, it's very windy out there. So we'll see, but anyway, I've, I'm happy with what I got so far, but I would think I probably have at least another eight gallons out there, maybe, maybe that much, I'm not positive. And so, but anyway, my grapes ended up doing really good. I wasn't sure again, because of such a late, late summer coming on, if I would get any grapes or much at all, but I'm very happy, pleased with the amount of grapes we got thankfully to our extended summer that we had, which now we are finally into our fall. <laughs> and then I wanna bring up the recipe collaboration. I have only got a couple of people that submitted something to go into my subscriber recipe collaboration. So if you haven't heard of this yet, what this is, I have several videos, two have published, one will be publishing soon, the garden one, and then the next one I'm working on is the recipe one. And these are all subscriber submitted photos that I'm putting together in a topical form. And it all, most of it's going to have to do with something you've learned from my videos. So the recipe collaboration, all your photos that you submit have to be based off of a recipe you got from my channel. So um, it, it doesn't have to be exactly my same recipe. It can have all your own tweaks and differences as long as it's at least inspired by a recipe I put out and then you made it suit you. So for example, let's say you went to my, um, the kielbasa cabbage potato dish that I make. I don't even know what to call it. And you wanted to make it vegan like I suggested. I did make some vegan su suggestions in there. So you obviously left out the kielbasa and added some of your own ingredients like the portobello mushrooms or whatever, something like that, or anything else that you've tailored to suit your dietary needs or just your taste buds or your family's taste buds. Anything like that is fine, as long as it was based off my initial recipe. So if you're new to my channel and would like to learn some new recipes, I've got a couple of different links I'll put down below. I have one that's all dairy-free. Mostly it's about making your own dairy-free milks. But it also includes making a cheese, making a pudding, I think, in there. And I might have a couple other things. I have one on how to make your own homemade chocolates. I have several different recipes, but that also includes the chocolate sauce. I have one for desserts and then one more for meals. So frugal meals. So I'll put all four of those playlists down below. And you can pick out of those which recipe you would like to do. And then just take some good quality photos. I'll take up to three photos per person and then I'll be putting that collaboration together. But I want, really wanna see those su submissions come in because it, I've only, I think I've only got two, maybe three so far. So please send those to me, raincountryhomestead at gmail.com so I can start putting that collaboration slideshow together. They are a lot of work putting them together. They are a lot of work. For only a seven, eight minute video, there's so much time that goes into all of that, but it is fun and I love the interaction it brings and then inspiring other people to go, oh, I'm gonna try this. So anyway, if you're interested to see how my other ones have turned out, I have, I'll be putting the playlist. As of now, the time this video is published, there's only two published, but real soon, I think maybe this week or next week, the uh, garden collaboration should be publishing. And that then you'll be able to see that one. For now, it will show up as private. So let's get those submissions in so I can get that video put together. I was hoping to have it done sometime mid to late November, but if I have to extend it out to December, that's fine too. And then a couple more housekeeping type things is, as of today, the day that I'm shooting this video anyway, YouTube just changed how you access the description box, which means every video where I say, as far as the computer goes, right down here below my channel name, that's all gonna be wrong. <laughs> but it's actually easier to access. All you gotta do is just click, you'll see a part 
a portion of the description box already show. And to be able to see all the links in there, just click on the description box, anywhere on that box. It's a long rectangle now. If you just click on that, it'll open it, the whole thing up. Now, again, that's only if you're on a computer. I did check on my iPhone and notice that it looks the same. It's just a little gray arrow off to this side, but that may vary according to what smart device you have. And then the last thing I wanted to bring up was the skirts. I've been getting a lot of questions about the skirts and how people can buy them. So I want to reiterate the fact that I am not doing specific custom orders. My skirts are basically a one size fits most, which means it can, they can fit a tiny person and up to someone with 53 inch hips and waist. Now the, some people who are shorter like me might prefer the tier, the three tier, but I'm only five foot tall and I love the four tier. I would never wear the three tier. I like my skirts to go clear to the top of my feet, um, but I will still be doing some three tiers. But anyway, how you do this is you have to get on the skirt notification, which eventually I'll add aprons to that too when I start doing the aprons, email list. And once I finish a skirt, I'm gonna send out an email and I try to send it out at different times of the day, different days of the week. So because I know not everybody's just sitting at their computer. So I'm trying to make sure different people have a chance to buy a skirt and I'll send out that email notification and it's first come first serve. So anyway, just send me an email if you wanna get on that uh, skirt notification list and I'll make sure you get in that list. And then what happens is when I send those emails out, right now I have over 200 people just on the skirt notification list. And so when I send that out, there's at least 200 other people that are getting that same email. Okay, well, I think that was all for my this and that video for the week. And I hope you enjoyed it. Any thoughts, ideas you'd like to input, just go ahead and put them in comments down below. Don't forget to check out the links I'll be putting in the description box and submit those photos from the recipes I've given you. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless. <music>